Hi, and welcome to Be Entrepreneur, the first, Be Entre first TV channel for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. My name is Beja Slank, and along with David McDonald of Silver Island TV, are the producers of Be Entrepreneur TV. The aim of this channel is to be the show for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. More and more people are moving away from traditional employment and starting their own businesses. This channel aims to bring you the most up-to-date insights on how you can live the life that you want for either starting your own business, having the dream career, or living a life on purpose. What we aim to bring you over the next few weeks is insights on all things entrepreneurial, be that business growth, new apps, funding opportunities, social media, personal development, anything that helps you live the life that you want. There is so much out there, how do you know who to listen to? Well, we will look around the world for the best of the best and look for experts making the difference in the world of entrepreneurship today. This show is about you and we want to hear from you. So send us your tweets using hashtag BTV and we'll look back, get back to you soon. So this week's show, we have Mark Shaw, UK's leading Twitter and Periscope expert. We'll be talking about why social media is so important for business and about a brand new app called Periscope. Our off-location off report today is from uh, the Ultra Academy launch. Julian Hall and his Ultra Academy team launched their new app about how you can be an entrepreneur. And we have a location report from him. We also have an interview from Warren Cass. Warren Cass is the founder of Business Scene and he's going to talk about all about entrepreneurship and why he loves entrepreneurship. But before all that, let's welcome Mark. How are you doing, Mark? Great, thanks, Peter. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. No Thank problem. You. Welcome coming on. Now I know you're well into social media. You know, you've been talking about Periscope the last few weeks. But before we talk about that and why social media is great for business, yes. how did you get into the world of social media? Great question. I started off in social media well over seven years ago. I've been on Twitter over seven years. But I used to sell medical products to the NHS, and I learned two very important lessons. The first lesson I learned was that if I used to call up and speak to a consultant and say, I'm coming to sell you something, I'd get an appointment in about a year's time. If, however, I called them up and said, can I come and do some training, I used to get an appointment the next day, they'd fill the room with doctors and nurses, but most importantly, they bought more of my stuff. So I learned from that experience that the more training, help, support, guidance you do, the more stuff you sell. I call it selling without selling. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So I left the NHS, I left selling products, because eventually they ran out of money to sell it, to buy anything, and I became a mortgage broker. Okay. Doing that very successfully until everyone was hanging outside the Northern Rock. How many years two, ago was that? 2008. Right, okay. Uh, and then no one needed a broker anymore. So I then found Twitter. Right. Like most people, I couldn't understand why anyone would, would want to know I'm having a cup of coffee, a cheese sandwich. But unlike most people, I spent a year figuring it out, got suspended, chucked out, you name it. I tried it, I did it. And at the end of that year, I became quite good at it. And I suppose the big breakthrough came for me when Chris Evans on the radio called me to come on his show to explain to people how to do it. So that's my journey into social media. Fantastic, great. Now, I know you really, there's a lot of people out there who sort of do social media, but you really focus on Twitter. Yes. And what, how Twitter could really work. But what I want to talk about for, with you today is what, before we talk about tips later on, is why is social media so important for business? What's the, what's the, is it emperor's clothes or is it something that, you know, there's not a business on this world that shouldn't be socially aware? Okay, so I get asked, exactly the same question all the time. People say to me, social media is not suitable for my business. I'm a B2B business or B2C business. And I have the same answer to everyone. Twitter and social media is P2P, person to person. Okay. That's the main reason and probably the biggest reason why every business, big and small, the person in their bedroom at home to the biggest brand, biggest corporate, need to embrace social media. But here's the thing. It's called social media for a reason. It's not called auto media, it's not called business media, it's not called sales media, it's called social media. And therein lies the first problem. Most people don't understand how you do it, how you play the game, so to speak. Yeah, There's yeah. an etiquette, yeah. okay? And they turn up just broadcasting. They turn up with the same marketing mindset of 1975, mm. which is if you shout a lot, people buy our stuff. That doesn't work on social media. The main advantage of social media is the two-way street. Mm. And that is totally different to radio, billboards, newspapers, and so on. Mm. Okay? And because of that, you get the greatest amount of feedback, advice. You can do Q&A. You can get all sorts of things because of that yeah. two-way street. And I think, uh, and I use social quite a lot, it's the, it, patience is the issue because people want an immediate result. They want to do something and someone comes back to them. But that's not how the world of social works. Correct. I mean, I get clients who ring up and say they want to launch something in a week. They haven't been on Twitter, what can they do? And the answer is nothing. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't work like that. It's yeah. not who shouts the loudest. Mm. You can't do 27,000 tweets in one day. Mm. 
mm. and expect stuff to happen. Mm. It's a long-term approach, a consistent approach. Mm -hmm. all right? They're the people who will win that game, but also an integrated approach to other things that you do. This is not we do social, we stop doing everything else. Mm. You still carry on doing your other activities. Mm -hmm. You just need to add on the fact that within Twitter particularly, there's something like 500 million Twitter accounts, a million people a day are joining. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's a big community. That is a channel that you need to look at and explore and ultimately will get you business if you understand how to do it properly. You mentioned something there about you know selling without selling. And there's a phrase uh, on Twitter, hashtag social selling. And it's understanding how you build relationships. What, what's your take on that? And how, how do you think small business can start doing that as opposed to, you know, say they're just starting out. Yes. And they think, I really want to embrace this but, and not fall into the trap of, look, what I've got to sell, selling my widget. What, what sort of things? Okay. So, so the first thing I always say to people is, a lot of people want to go from stranger to sale in one tweet. Never going to happen. Okay. The advantage of social media, of Twitter, is that you can demonstrate your knowledge, demonstrate your expertise. But the first thing you need to do is have a niche. You have right. to be memorable. Mm -hmm. Most people are totally forgettable, and most people can't really explain what they do in under 10 minutes. That doesn't really work, okay? So you need to have a niche, very tight niche. You need to be very memorable, and you need to keep showing up. But also, you need to start talking to people, be interesting as a person, and engage with other people, and have the mindset this is a long-term play. Mm -hmm. If you're expecting results today, tomorrow, sadly, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But the opportunities are there if you adopt that sort of mindset. A lot of people say to me, what's the best tools to get with social media? Loads of yeah, tools, that yeah. sort of thing. It's not about the best tools, it's about having the right mindset. And it's a mindset of giving, supporting, helping, and working with other people. Mm. And the more you help someone else achieve what they want, the more you get in return. I suppose there's probably solo entrepreneurs, they can do that, they'll get on there to do what they want, but there's probably business owners there who've got staff. Yes. Right? They want to become socially aware, but they're really nervous. You know, Are they going to tweet? like I tweet or fall into this trap of you know, how they first go networking and giving business cards out, the equivalent yes. of broadcast. Yes. What would you say to a business owner who wants to become socially aware but have got a number of staff thinking, oh God, how do I manage this? Okay, so the first thing is, is that you really, my advice would be you need to harness your workforce and not stop them from doing it because you know what? They're going to be looking at their phones whether you like it or not. <laughs> so really you need four things with all of your staff. You need guidance, you need guidelines, you need training and you need support. Okay? And if you do those four things, Okay, then your staff should be trained to know what they're doing, how they're doing it, what's the tone of your business, when should they be doing it, what should they be saying, because ultimately it's the Friday night at 10 o'clock at night when your phone will ring when something's gone wrong. Mm. So let's avoid that. I also get some interesting calls on a Monday morning, which is the person looking after our Twitter account doesn't work here anymore right. and we can't get access. We haven't got the logins. <laughs> got no, the got logins. logins. <laughs> okay, so I get that as well. So right. know what your passwords are, know what your usernames and so on are. Yeah. Train the people because ultimately you want to harness your workforce. Mm. If you've got 50 people working there mm. and they all do this properly, okay, with a goal in mind, with a strategy in mind, then ultimately that will get you more exposure and more business. Right. Now you talk about, it's not about the tools, it's about the mindset. Yes. What is the mindset you need to really approach Twitter or any social media that's going to be conducive to getting the most out of it? The, the mindset is for sharing, caring, supporting and helping other people. Right. That would be my four things. Okay. Be ultimately, no one really cares what you do. Mm. What they care about is that you can help them achieve what they want. Mm -hmm. And the more that you do, so by answering questions, demonstrating your knowledge, by giving tips and advice. I give the best tips, the best advice that I can. And people say to me, why don't you sell your stuff? And I say, no, no, no. In my, in my view is give away your best stuff all day long for free because then ultimately some people who see your stuff will then go and do it themselves, that's fine. But there's a lot of other people who will see you and then will want to hire you because they can see you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's the mindset of sharing and helping others. And most people, sadly, they don't want to collaborate. They don't no. want to help anyone else. They just want to be very, what I call it, 1975, and they keep everything very close to Yeah, very, very, very sort of, you know, controlling and yeah. to their chest and, and stuff. You don't, and, and listen, you know, Twitter isn't for everybody. Mm. You know, it's not what business you have. Twitter's for every business, but it's more your mindset. If you don't like to share, if you only want to do one tweet every two weeks, then it probably isn't going to work for you. And that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just the wrong medium for you. So you talk about mediums, and there might be some people here who uh, use social media, but they use social media, Facebook, Twitter, yes. Google+, LinkedIn. Yes. Um, 
how can you decide what platform to start on or wh which is the best for your business? What should you look for? How okay. do you do well, well, the first thing is, is that people want to try and dominate everywhere, okay? And there's only really one way of doing that. Either you have a massive team, a billion dollars in the bank, okay, and then you can, because each community demands a different language, a different approach, it's a different community. Mm -hmm. So what people ultimately end up doing is they want to be everywhere, they duplicate the same content, and they put it everywhere. And you know what, if I ain't gonna read it there, I'm probably not reading yeah, it there yeah. or there, okay? Yeah. So don't try and be everywhere would be tip number one. Try and be where your customers are. Okay. So for example, I, I, you know, there's a great analogy I would give, which is that LinkedIn is like, the, is like this sort of office, you know, it's like a business meeting. Facebook is when you invite them back to your home, and Twitter is like a cocktail party. So much like, so, yeah. As a nice sort of analogy, okay? Mm. LinkedIn is great as a CV, so perhaps more recruitment-based, more connecting with people is more LinkedIn. Actual looking for business, I would say is more Twitter based. Mm. Facebook, yes, you can get business, but it more started off as a social platform where you shared stuff with your family mm. and friends and so on. Mm. But ultimately you can't be everywhere. I mean, there's Snapchat, there, there's loads of different yeah, places. Yeah. Identify where your audience is, and that's possibly the first question you need to ask yourself. So, and so the natural question there: How do I do that? How do I know where my audience is? You know, do you have to start looking at all of them and see which response you get back first? How do you do that? You do a trial, do a test, but ultimately look at what products and services you're selling. Look at the age gap, age gap, age group. Okay, so if you're doing very teenager stuff, it might be more of a Snapchat and a Facebook. Okay, mm. um, where are they in the world? What is your product or service? And Perhaps go to the different platforms and do some testing and measuring. Mm. I can't give you the answer, but by doing, mm. you'll discover the sort of response rates you get and the sort of different mm. results you'll get from the different places. One thing I've noticed is that um, people think, you know, Twitter and Facebook have been around for ages. You know, it's just the top of the iceberg. You know, we're only just starting in the age. And if you get it right, you can elevate yourself really high because there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of things out there not, not appropriate or not they're not conducive to what they want to get. So if you do get it right, the opportunity is massive. Well, well, here's the thing, okay. The guy at Google said that, you know what, there's as much content that goes on the internet in one day now that has gone on from the dawn of time until today. Okay. Wow. So it's not about, so content, yes, seems to mm. be great, okay. Mm. But I think it's not about content. It's about context. Yeah. So let me explain, okay. Context is why I read your stuff. And why I read it is because you've developed a relationship with me. You said hello to me in the morning. We've got a bit of banter going. I know where you are. Maybe we've met for coffee. Mm. Okay? That's what gets me to notice you. Mm. A lot of people are adding noise, not adding any value. And they think just by shouting a lot, people are going to notice them. They're not because everybody now wants you to like them, check out my my blog, my YouTube, like me here, Facebook me here, tweet me here, do this, do yeah, this. Yeah. No one's got any time. Time is the biggest commodity. Mm -hmm. So if I have no time, why would I look at your stuff, and not his stuff or her stuff? It's because we've built a relationship. Absolutely. That's what takes the time, and that's the bit most people don't want to mm. do. And that way, you need a plan. And it's very well in a strategy. He's very well saying, I'm going to get on Twitter one day, do a few tweets, do a few blogs. But if you don't have a long-term plan, you don't want to get the results. Well, I say to businesses, they need to have three questions before they start. Okay? Question number one, and none of them seem to ask this, why do you want to be on there in the first place? Okay, hardly anyone asks this. What is the channel? Yeah. Is it customer care? Is it to sell more stuff in a nice way? Is it to get more people running in the marathon for us? What is the purpose? Because that then gives you the tone, how much resources you need to spend and, and utilize. The second thing is, who's going to do the stuff? Okay. <laughs> Most organizations, okay, they look around the room, they pick the youngest person who's going to do it because yeah. they know a bit about Facebook. They might be a great person, but that's not a great plan of who's going to do it. Okay, because ultimately the greatest strategy I can give you, but if you've only got one person doing it five minutes a week and I've given you a strategy for nine people three hours a day, it's not going to work. So why do you want to be on there? Who's going to do it? What resources do you need and you have available? And thirdly, what is success? Mm. No one ever says what is success. Typically they say how many followers we've got, how many retweets we've got. With the greatest respect, no one cares. Okay? Mm. You say mm. that to your financial director, he's not going to care. Yeah. What he's going to care about is website traffic, sign-ups to your newsletter, physical things sold. So you need to measure the right metrics at the beginning and have a long-term plan. This is three months, six months, nine months. So that when you come back at that period of time 
And the director says, how are we doing? You've been doing all this stuff. You can say, well, we've had 42% more website traffic. We've got 18,000 more people on the newsletter. We've sold this, this, and this. And then they go, okay, maybe we need to put more money into this. Because yeah, yeah. they get it then. Absolutely. So, so there's no difference there in terms of how you're applying a social media strategy to how you run your business. You know, why are you doing it? Where's your customers? And what's the, what's the metrics that you use to measure the success? Well, so. this, is, this is the odd thing. Yeah. Right? It's like marketing's over here. You have a plan, a strategy, yeah. goals, all the stuff I talked about. Then we're going to do social media and we're going to ignore all of that. Okay? Yeah. And we're just going to do something completely different. We put up a, a rubbish logo in two seconds. We do half a tweet. We have no plan. Mm. We're going to get a five-year-old to do it once a week. And I can't understand then when they say, hasn't worked for us. It I must know. be Twitter. It's not, it's you. No, you've, you've already <laughs> turned your hair out. I'm still tearing my hair out. You're right. It's, it's integrated in the whole business, yes. which is great. Now, I know over uh, the last few weeks in a Periscope, there's a new app called Periscope. And we're going to talk about Periscope in a, in a, in a later on in the show. Yes. Um, and I know the day it launched, you heard about it. I was on it 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And I think you DM'd me about 15 minutes later <laughs> or something. And I got, oh, what's this Periscope? Yes. So we're going to talk about Periscope and why why potentially it's it's, it's saying quite significant that most people... To me, this is Twitter on steroids. Right, Twitter on steroids. So if you want to hear about Twitter on steroids, uh, uh, stay, in, stay tuned on the show later on. So thank you, Mark, for the time being. We'll, we'll talk to you in a moment. So that's Mark Shaw talking about why social media is really important in business and some of the things that you need to be talking about. And we'll be talking about Periscope later. Now we've got a feature from uh, Julian Hall. Julian Hall runs Entrepreneurship, and he launched his new app a few weeks ago. And we went along to the launch. Uh, we spoke to Julian and some of his colleagues about what the app is about and uh, hear from his colleagues. Here's Julian Hall. Hi, Beju at Google Campus. We're here at the launch for Ultra Academy's new website and, and app. So let's see what's going on. We're here, here with Julian Hall, the founder and creator of Ultra Academy. How are you doing, my friend? I'm very well, sir. Very, very well. Good, good. You've got the famous mic here now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So this is the launch of Ultra Academy. Just before we start about what, what's happening here today, what is Ultra Academy? So Ultra Academy is the world's first self-development platform for entrepreneurs. So I was just saying on stage that when we're taught how to be successful in business, we focus on the business. What I'm saying is that we should focus not just only on the business, but on ourselves as well, because we are a key element of the business and a key element of that business success. So with Ultra Academy, that's us very well. So we spoke to some of your expert coaches. You've got a whole range of areas. So what are the areas that make the complete entrepreneur? Okay, cool. So um, in order to be a really successful entrepreneur and to sustain success, more importantly, I say that you've got to have a handle on a number of key areas of your life. One is your physical health, physical nutrition, the relationships you have both um, personally and professionally, um, your spirituality. And also when you're doing the business, it should be something that you love and it should be something that you're good at at the same time. So today's you launching the actual, is it an app, is it a website, and what, what's happening with the launch? What is the actual, cool. what's going to be available? Right, so what's launching today um, is the website, and the app will be available in two or three days' time. And I've also launched this morning the Ultra Kids Club, which is uh, a, a set of learning activities that introduces the ideas of entrepreneurship to primary school children, and that happened at Fleet School in Hampstead. Wow, great. So that's going to be something that kids, school children can get access to and start understanding this type of education. You know, like I'm really passionate about getting this education out there, so that's fantastic. Well, so how can people access it? Is it a website? Is it available? Well, it will be available today, obviously. What's the website? So the website is ultra.academy. New domain name as well. New domain, New domain. <laughs> fantastic. Great, great, fantastic. And what's the bigger picture? You know, in two, three years' time, what will Ultra Academy be about? What will be happening, do you think? So the, the underlying theme of the Ultra Academy is to help people become the best that they can be, essentially. And what I want is for millions of entrepreneurs around the world to find that hero inside them, right? And that, that is what I think will make them ultra. So that's what this whole idea is about. Um, it's a metaphor for, you know, everybody has that genius, everybody has that hero inside of them. And I honestly believe that these four elements together will help to make the best version of you possible. Right, right. So give us a little, give us a twirl. Look at the hero status. Can you, can you, can you, f yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> can you fly? I can, I can, <laughs> but you know, I can't do it in public. I'll turn too many heads. That's all right, great, great. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Good luck with the launch and uh, speak to you soon. Cheers, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hi, good morning. I'm here. It's Beju Solanke from I'm an Entrepreneur TV. We're here at the Ultra Academy launch and we have the Deputy Mayor of London here, Victoria Borwick, and talking, doing the keynote earlier on. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you so much for inviting. I really feel the energy here today. Well, I'm really great. It's really great to invite me. Thank you so much because, of course, it's entrepreneurship and apprenticeships that are really the keystones of what we need for our economy going forward. And Boris is very, very keen to go on promoting these parts, particularly here as we are on the Google campus. So thank you very much indeed for giving us some publicity today. And good luck to all the young people who are taking part because they are the business people of the future. And without them, London would not continue to be the greatest city on earth so thank you absolutely great some really good points there do you there's a lot of vibe about entrepreneurship and you know, people might think yeah you know it's a passing fad you know can you really start your own business is that really the lifeblood do you think it's just a fad or do you think no do you know what people need to really engage in this community and and support new startups it's really, really important. If you look at all the businesses that have started up over the years, they've started because people have had a great idea. They've come together as an idea, they've brainstormed together, they've worked as a team, and they've either come up through Young Enterprise or they've come up just because they've had some really inspirational teaching at our schools or they've come to great things like this or they've seen programs like the sort that you're putting on and they said, I can do that, I can succeed, I can make success of my life. And that's very good news and we wish all those young entrepreneurs the greatest success. Fantastic, great. So what kind of things can uh, the London community look forward to in terms of what the Mayor's Office is doing to support entrepreneurship in London? What kind of things can we look out for? Well, he's certainly been uh, supporting the apprenticeship scheme. He's certainly been working with a great number of um, consortia to talk about startups, about encouraging people, uh, looking at how we can sort out the planning process to encourage startups, to make sure they don't get driven out of London, because he really appreciates, particularly here today in the tech sector, as we can see, how important it is for London. Right, and we're here at Google Campus, which is a you know sort of a hybrid of, of, of activity. There's lots of things happening, so it's really great that the London support. And I know there's a lot of activity, and we look forward to your speech later on. Thank you very much indeed, and good luck to everyone here today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Do one, take two. Hi, Beja here from I'm an Entrepreneur TV. We're here at the Ultra Academy launch and we've got the three beautiful expert coaches here, Ribu, Leah and Yvonne. So, Leah, what is Ultra Academy? What's this all about? Um, Julian's been an entrepreneur for over a decade. In that time, he was never satisfied with the fact that to be a good entrepreneur and succeed in business, he had to sacrifice the other areas of his life, which put him out of balance. So he's put together this personal development tool so that entrepreneurs can balance all the areas in their life so that they can be more successful in their business. And those, those three areas are? Well, there's actually five areas. Health, fitness, nutrition, mindfulness or spirituality, relationships and business. And so today we've got Ribu, who's a mindfulness expert coach. Uh, what's that about? How does that work? Well, it's, it's more about connecting with yourself. So spirituality is a concept which is thought about in different ways. So it's more about identifying your specific way of connecting with the spiritual self. And we all know how important that is. Um, I've been practicing this myself, and I see that it makes a big difference in the sense um, it makes you feel that nothing can stop you, nothing can touch you. And spirituality and mindfulness is a way of staying content within yourself no matter what happens. And you know how important that is for businesses. Absolutely. Now, I think where the way we're going now with so much information that if we're not in peace with ourselves, it can be very hard. Great. And Leah, you're a nutritional yes. co expert coach. So I'm assuming that's food and stuff? Yeah. Or is it a bit more than that? Oh no, it's mainly food, but I do focus on other areas of complementary and natural health. This is because your food is your fuel. So for a businessman to succeed, businesswomen to succeed, they need fuel so that they can be laser focused on their goals, so that they can achieve their goals and push their business to wherever they want it to go, as well as having the energy and mental clarity to focus on spirituality, to focus on building meaningful relationships and um, physical fitness as well, which is what Omar deals with, the, one of the other coaches. So it's about eating the foods that give you the energy so that you can fulfill all the other areas of your life. Right, fantastic, great. And Yvonne, relationship coach, I'm assuming that's all types of relationships, business, personal life? Yes, it is, all types of relationships. But the main relationship that I do focus on on the course is your relationship with yourself, because that is the most important relationship, because how you are is how you're gonna, um, how other people are gonna perceive you and how you relate to other people. And then we also focus on your relationship with other people, your family members, and your business relationships, and how you should be with certain people in business, and how you need to build relationships, meaningful relationships for yourself and others, and that way it's gonna really enhance your entrepreneurialism. 
No, I've done, and I've done some work with, with Julian and you know, entrepreneurship is like, it's at the holistic approach. It looks like you've covered a lot of the angles, which are fantastic. So, okay, um, so if people want to take advantage of this, is there a software, is there an app, is there an event, what can people do? There's a website and an app. You go to www.ultra.academy. All of the coaches have put together 12-step programs that you can register for for free. There's also other levels of membership where you get more help and support from Julian himself and the other coaches. So that is the only thing you need to do after listening to this is go to <laughs> ultra.academy and you, not .com, which is new age. It's ultra.academy. There's also an app that you can download onto your iPhone or your Android. And th there you'll be able to access the 12 12-step programs from five expert coaches to help you to achieve your entrepreneurial dreams. Great, great. I think uh, I think you made it clear there. There's, yeah. there's a 12-step program somewhere along the lines when you go to the yeah, to the app. Yeah. Going to, well, have a great day. We're going to see what the launch is about, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Joseph. So here, I'm here at the Ultra Academy launch and I'm with uh, Stuart Maitland uh, here and you're the chairman of the Central London Youth Enterprise. I am, well, I'll do that myself. Sure. My name is Stuart Maitland and I'm the chairman of Young Enterprise Central North London. Central North London, great, right. So um, tell me, what, what is that organisation about? What does it do? I have a board of 15 people um, which go into schools and colleges all over Central North London and help young people start businesses. We provide business advisors and we provide selling opportunities for them. Wow, it's a great initiative. And has that come through through the go for the mayor's office? It's, no, it's not. It's not came through City Hall. Uh, Young Enterprises, the UK's leading um, entrepreneurship educational charity. It's the biggest, and it's been around for about fifty-two years now. Wow, great. So, um, Stuart, are you an entrepreneur yourself? You got your own business? Yeah, um, I've won many awards. Um, as the deputy mayor reiterated, um, I work very, very closely with City Hall and central government on business. Wow, great. So, how long have you been chairman? I've been chairman for one year actually this month, so wow. it's uh, we're celebrating the first anniversary and what a year it's been. Great, congratulations. So what's on the horizon for you as a businessman? The horizon is me. Um, I want to focus some more um, investment into small businesses and to push the entrepreneurs of the future because as the Deputy Mayor said, this is the way the country's going and right now it's the most exciting time to become an entrepreneur. Okay. So if there was a young 15, 16 year old watching thinking, could I really be an entrepreneur? What would you be your message be for them? Look, of course, everybody can be entrepreneurs. If you've got the mindset and you want to do something, you can do it. Absolutely. Great, fantastic. Well, it was a great message there, Stuart, and good luck on your chairmanship, and uh, hopefully all goes well. Thanks so much. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Yeah. So that's I'm an Entrepreneur at the Ultra Academy launch. Hope you've enjoyed our interviews and the insights uh, from Julian and his gang. So I'm an entrepreneur, really keen to talk to anybody who's running events around entrepreneurship. So if you've got an event coming up, or you've got some features, or you've got a new business starting, contact us here at I'm an Entrepreneur TV, and we're happy to do a future. Till the next time, see you soon. Bye-bye. So that was Julian Hall at Entrepreneur TV. Oh, that's it. we've got a bit of feedback here, so that's what live, live recording is all about. Uh, two seconds. There you go. Put that down. There you go. That's what live, live recording as it is. So there you go. You know we're live. Um, so that was Julian Hall from Ultra Academy. He was launching his new app called Entrepreneurship. And he's, uh, uh, his view around entrepreneurship is, you know, you've got to be the whole person. It's about mind, body, spirit, and nutrition. So that was great there. So if you go to Ultra Academy, um, uh, Google that, and you'll see his app, and you'll see his website. Uh, great stuff with Julian. We're going to have Julian uh, on the show soon talking about all his ventures there. Um, next, we've got Warren Cass. Now, um, we are in touch with many, many different entrepreneurs around the world in the UK about why they do what they do. And our, we've got a series of interviews called I Love Entrepreneurship. And we ask them some questions that maybe you won't get asked uh, in normal interviews. So here's Warren Cass of Business Scene about why he loves entrepreneurship. Obviously, the best thing about being an entrepreneur, Beijing, is I get to hang out with really cool people like you. 
Um, now, do you know what? The thing about being an entrepreneur is you're in control of your own destiny. For anybody who really wants to, you know, plow their own field and really go and make something happen and make a difference, that's what uh, an entrepreneur enables you to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm uh, absolutely in love with the fact that we get to actually meet with like-minded people. We're in a, it's a really exciting time to be an entrepreneur in the UK. I think we've got the most enterprising youth coming through, mainly because of things like media attention on things like Dragon's Den and all of that type of thing. It's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. The best business book I've ever read about being an entrepreneur was probably the one I was gifted at 19 years old, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. What it really set out for me was the power of a mastermind group, surrounding yourself with the right people. Really, really important lesson. My favorite quote, well actually I've got two, can I give you two? So the first one which I think defines most entrepreneurs which is, rules are for the guidance of the wise but the obedience of fools. If you always do things the way that you were always taught to do them, you don't disrupt and you don't change. There's a chap called Alastair Sim, who was a Scottish actor. You might remember him from St. Trinian's and uh, Scrooge at um, Christmas Carol. But uh, he said that people, under the age, uh, people over the age of 25 should not be allowed to vote. People under the age of 25 are still looking for the answer, where people over the age of 25 have, think they've already found it. Therefore, progress really, really um, uh, depends on people under the t age of 25. So change is inevitable. Rules are for the guidance of the wise and the obedience of fools. But I will just tell you one other quick thing, which has been my personal realization in business, where I, I've always tried to take on too much. The critical key to success in business is the you let go of. I'll give you one particular example, uh, which was um, a few years ago where I let somebody handle, somebody else handle some of my stakeholder relations um, and things became a little bit political. So if I was to say anything to anybody, um, it's always c keep in control of your stakeholder, your key relations in business. Look, I've got so many heroes in business and uh, some of them are the ones that I'm sure you've heard from other people that you've interviewed like the, the Steve Jobs and the Richard Bransons. But I'm actually gonna tell you a different one, which was uh, my father. Alec Cass, the, the lesser known or unheard of uh, uh, business educator. When I was a, a young lad, my father absolutely showed me uh, what it was about in terms of building rapport and relationships with people and influencing people. So I actually, um, I watched him command rooms, a charismatic man who was a military man, um, but it, uh, even in that context, people knew him and respected him and I saw how he treated people. And uh, that was a massive lesson for me. So uh, my father is my hero. The one big thing in 2020, well, do you know what? I actually think this is a really difficult one to, um, to predict because the world is changing at such a pace now. If you look at evolution over the last um, 2,000 years, we've gone at this very, very gentle pace and we're now at the beginning of a curve that's exponentially going up. And uh, how that's going to take us in the next eight years from a technology point of view, I would hate to predict. What I can tell you is going to completely disrupt the way we do everything in life, not just in business. So if I was to uh, turn that into a bit of advice for people, is keep absolutely on top of change. Change is inevitable. It's happening at such a fast pace now. Keep on top of the change and know how that affects you, your business, your industry, more importantly, your customers. My legacy, well, I, I'd like to say actually our legacy, um, but from a, from a personal point of view, I love inspiring business owners and entrepreneurs to doing things bigger and better. From a business team point of view, our legacy is about, we want to leave a real footprint on entrepreneurs and startup businesses and growing businesses in the UK by making them more profitable, uh, more protected, make sure they're winning sales and generating influence, but building stronger relationships. From a business point of view, I've had many, many proud moments and many sort of big brands, but I've got to say I've never been as proud as where we are right now with Business Scene because we're starting to make some real impact on small businesses in the UK. And it's not about what we do for ourselves, it's the impact we're making on other people's businesses that I'm really, really proud of. So that was uh, Warren Castle Business Scene. Um, uh, you know, you've met Warren several I've met times. Him quite haven't? A few times. Great yeah, guy. yeah, very, very great guy. And uh, you know, he's been in. Well, since I started the business myself, he's been in business, and uh, he's been ups and downs. So there's been great insights there. And we've got about 26, 27 of those interviews lined up. So uh, look forward to some others. So welcome back, Mark. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thanks for, for staying back. Now, before we talked about the importance of social media yes. and uh, you know why we should do it. But there's one app over the last few weeks that's sort of been you know out there and you've been really sort of enthusiastic about it called Periscope. Yes. So for those who haven't heard about Periscope, what is Periscope? Okay, so Periscope is owned by Twitter and it allows you to do two things. 
one is an app that you download currently just on your iPhone, but Android I'm sure will be coming fairly soon, okay? It allows you to do two things. One, live stream from your phone, and two, watch live streams from your phone. That's all you can really do. Okay. Live streaming is not new. There's been quite a lot of companies that have done live streaming in the past. Okay, What's really sexy about this one is, A, that your grandma can do it. It's very <laughs> easy. B, you can be you know, broadcasting literally within five seconds. C, your phone now is a broadcast TV station. That gives any person at home, any business, an unbelievable opportunity, a global opportunity. That's why it's so sexy. Great. Now, you say it's owned by Twitter. Is that significant? Yes. Okay, And it's significant because... Twitter has its own infrastructure, so in terms of servers, technology, you know that it's not going to fall apart at the seams. It's going to get regular feature updates. It's already had four updates in the last 50 days, and I'm sure more are coming. But the other huge thing that's really important is the full integration within Twitter. Okay? So when you do a show, I call them shows rather than broadcast, because that implies one-way street, a show's more interactive. Okay? So when you do a show, by putting a, a, you know, a, a title or a headline, that integrates within what people are searching on in Twitter, what's trending in Twitter. Not only does it go to your followers on Twitter, mm -hmm. but it goes into the Twitter universe. Suddenly, you can have a global worldwide audience who can get access to your show, and you're in your lounge, and it's costing you no money. This is unheard of. This is incredible. Yeah, I, I, I remember when you first heard of it. It was a minute after it was launched <laughs> yeah. or something, and then you DM'd me, and I looked at it. And uh, there's another, just just to sort of put it in perspective, there's another thing called Meerkat. Yes. And Meerkat, or let me just, is that similar to? Um, yes, Me to Meerkat was sort of started. Right. Meerkat. Both of them have been in the sort of making for a couple of years. They needed to wait for certain things to happen. They needed to wait for the technology of the iPhone or the phones, of Wi-Fi, 4G, because without that, you know, the days, you know, go back a couple of years, it was sort of 2G, iPhone 3. Yeah. Who watched video on your phone? It buffered, it didn't work very well. So the technology moved on mm -hmm. to allow them to do it. Meerkat was the first in the sort of space. Okay, great app, and it's great that there's two, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't think one should work and not work because they both, you know, with the features that they bring out, one ups the game, then the other has to up the game and yeah. so on. But the big difference is Meerkat is funded and different to Periscope in terms of Periscope's own Right, okay. So you say that um, uh, it's, it's within Twitter, so the potential audience is massive. Yes. You've got like a, a broadcast station, like we're in the studio here producing thing, but like I say, anybody can broadcast yes. from their phone. Yes. I can hear people saying, what, another, another app's going to make a lot of another noise, and where do I stop? So what is the benefits? Okay, you can broadcast. Is it going to be lots of people just broadcasting from their home saying, oh, I'm having breakfast? Look, instead of talking about the breakfast, you can see their breakfast now. Yes. Or is there a bigger, well, bigger okay. story like here? Like anything that's new, people are exploring, people are discovering, people are testing and trying, and a lot of people don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Got that, okay? But when you start to then uncover what, what's starting to emerge, for example, a very good vertical, you know, a different sector, is travel. Mm. All of a sudden, there's a lot of people, guides particularly, who are now doing live shows walking around the streets. Paris, to name one, Hong Kong, another, London, another. So suddenly, these guides who I'd never heard of suddenly have a way to demonstrate their expertise and knowledge, show the sights and sounds, and you're right in the middle of Paris, with a proper guide, which will lead ultimately, once they get a big enough audience, mm -hmm. to perhaps if I go to Paris, well, I might hire Claire or I might hire so-and-so because I've seen them demonstrating their knowledge and so on. Okay. So, yes, without doubt, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing, mm. okay? but there's a lot of people that I keep encouraging, create your niche, and that would probably be my first thing. Get a niche on what is your expertise, what are you passionate about, what are you the expert on, mm. everyone's an expert on something, mm -hmm. and start showing up and start mm. streaming something and you'll be amazed at the audience you can get. Because I can see how it can work quite easily if you're like a sort of a service niche, like if you're like a got a profession, whether you're like a social media expert yes. or a doctor or an accountant or yes. a chiropractor or something whereby you can sort of demonstrate some expertise. What about people selling widgets or selling stuff and okay. selling products? Well, how would that work? Okay, well, here's the thing. Okay. I think it's brilliant for fashion, brilliant for cooking. Okay, don't think, you know, it's, this is not about Hollywood. People know you're not in a studio. They mm. know you are at home in your kitchen or your mm. lounge, okay? What's important is you're demonstrating you, your vision, your story. People love to hear all that mm. stuff. You can be in your kitchen making something, your top tips on making the best lasagna and so on. The other thing that works really well is fashion, not just on eBay, for example, where you can see a catalogue image of the clothes. Why not do a fashion show in your lounge? Show it yeah. on models and all sorts of things. Touchy-feely, how do you make it? Here's the zipper, all sorts of things. So suddenly you get... 
the whole premise of, of Periscope is to be able to see through other people's eyes. Mm -hmm. So see how, why they're doing it, what's their passion. You know, you talked about entrepreneurship. Okay? Yeah. So share with me the passion, the vision, how are you gonna raise the money, why should I invest in you? They're key ingredients of how you're gonna get the money. Mm. I'm not interested in the business plan. I wanna know about you. Why have you come up with that widget or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then talk about it. But now, rather than just write a one pager, I can see you. I can talk to you. Not only that, you can give me regular updates. You can share with me your journey and all sorts of things. All this, I think, is the next thing. People are gonna to want to see this. And already, just about every celebrity is on it. All the brands are on it. All the businesses are on it. Maybe they're not broadcasting that much at the moment yeah. because, as we mentioned in the earlier part, it takes a di you know, they're dinosaur. It takes yeah. ages to move the jug and all. What are we going to say? And let's get it through legal and all that sort of stuff. So there again, for the person at home, for the entrepreneur who's just set up a business, fantastic opportunity. Mm. Don't you wish you could have got in on YouTube five minutes after it started? Oh, massively, absolutely. Or Twitter ten minutes after it started? That's the opportunity, really. Because I know Oprah's on it. Oprah's Oprah has been, joined the other yeah, week. Yeah, she joined the other week. And they're all Ellen, so it's going to be Oprah v. Ellen. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, and Floyd Mayweather's on there, and Bieber's got an account on there. Everyone will be Well, even like Philip Schofield, before this morning, I saw he was like, you can just go around the studio, like we did a bit of Periscope this morning, this before the show. So I can see, uh, let's say people accept, okay, this is, I think still there's a mindset shift as well needed to a really absolute, embrace it. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, yes, we talked about it in the other show, resources, you know, if mm. you don't have a ton of resources, then you do need to find something, mm. okay? But, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't even have computers, and I'm not that old. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Now, you've got, you know, I do a show, I've got people from Tahiti, yeah. Fiji, Australia, New Zealand, all around the world tuning in, mm. but because of the t Twitter integration, this is a virtual handshake, they get to mm. see you. They can now tweet me, DM me, say hello on Twitter to me, start a relationship. Look, I got on this show, I've done other stuff to, with other people, yeah, yeah. with the people I've met on Periscope. Mm. So it's a start point. It's not the be all and end all, but it's a, it's a huge opportunity. Right, right. So to give people, the viewers, an advantage here, what's some yeah. etiquette, what's some tips? They get on the app, they log in, you can only log in via Twitter, that's all right? Okay, no, they moved that, they changed that last week. Right, okay. Version 1.04, which is the latest update. All you need now is a mobile. You can have a Twitter right, account. Okay. I would recommend you do because of the Twitter integration. Yeah, yeah. But for people who go, oh, I hate Twitter, you now just need a mobile number. So that right. answers that question. Right, okay. So once you get the app, things you need to do. The first thing you need to do is grow your audience. Okay? No one knows you're on Periscope. You need to start telling everyone on all the different profiles, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, wherever you hang out, to follow you on Periscope, okay. you want an audience. Okay? Right. Second thing is you need a niche. Just really quickly, yes. is, is there a unique Periscope name or do you, is it your Twitter handle? It's your Twitter handle. Well, right. whatever Twitter name you associate with the account, they're joined at the hip. Right, so okay. if you join through Twitter, you, you have an account, okay. you have the same username. Okay. Okay? But you can change your name name, mm. Okay, that's coming in, coming in a new version, and you can change your photo, and you can edit your bio on Periscope, have a different okay. bio. Okay? Right. So one, let's start promoting yourself. Two, get yourself a niche. What are, you, what are you passionate about? What's your show going to be about? And what are you all about? Mm -hmm. okay? The third thing is you need to start doing some shows. Okay? Start getting out there. Okay? Fourth thing is when you have a headline, mm -hmm. and this is probably one of the most important things. It says, what are you seeing? And you type in a headline. Mm -hmm. Firstly, some people put no headline. That's not going to get anyone coming to watch your show. No. Some people put a lazy headline. You know, I'm bored. I'm on the couch. That's not really going to get anyone coming to show. Or the not right to right people. You might get people watching, but not but really. Not for the right reason. Yeah, yeah. What you want to do is you want to put a headline that attracts people. You want to market your headline. You need to market your show. Something okay. that's interesting. A list. Five ways to do this. Great, great recipes for a lasagna. Whatever the yeah. show is. Okay? okay. And lastly, around that, you need to add some hashtags. One or two, maybe. Okay. And what you want to add is what is popular on Twitter. So, for example, if you were doing a cooking show. I would do one on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Why? Because every Saturday on Twitter is trending Saturday morning kitchen because mm -hmm. it's on the TV. Yeah. So why not have your show that you're doing in your kitchen, I'm making a great lasagna, hashtag Saturday morning kitchen. Anyone who's now watching or tuned in on Twitter to see that will now see your show. They can click on it from a PC and watch it. Okay. It's got a global audience all of a sudden for no money. Okay. So that would be another tip. And I suppose the last tip is to have fun with it. It's yeah. to remember it's social, and to also remember that people can engage with you. Mm -hmm. They can send in comments. 
don't think this is just broadcast. So that's why it's a two-way thing, it's interaction. Yes. So why you can, yes. yeah, okay. So if you're doing a cooking show, yeah. why not ask the audience, what should I cook next week? Okay. And ask and get questions from them. They can't speak in it, they can type into they it. They can't speak, they just type. They type comments. That's, okay. that's hugely valuable. Massive, so yeah. again, I'm sharing you my journey, I'm sharing you my vision, mm -hmm. my story, my plan, and now get feedback. What do you guys think? Okay. What do you guys think of the lasagna? You can't taste it, but you can tell me what you think mm. of what I'm doing. So a couple of questions. Uh, you say broadcast. How many times should you, you know, once a day, 20, 10 times a day? Okay. What's the sort of, you know, okay. acceptable? So I think at least one a day. And the right. reason for that is now when you look at someone's profile, it will show you their recent broadcasts. Okay. And if it's naught, that's <laughs> yeah. nothing to see. Yeah. So you want at least one because they disappear every 24 hours. They fall but does the number of broadcasts that you've had still, it shows you've done 10 it broadcasts? It shows I've done 115, but, not but you can't watch the ones that have fallen off the cliff. So how long do they stay live? 24 hours. Right, okay. Unless you save them to YouTube. I save all mine to my YouTube channel, right. and then I repurpose them later. Directly on. when you record? Uh, at the end. It right. offers you two choices. Save to Periscope is a yes. Auto save to camera mm. on my phone yeah. is a yes as well. And then from the camera or you put it to YouTube? Uh, from the camera. Right, okay. What's YouTube. the reason why only 24 hours? Is it just a That's server gig thing? Meerkat thing? don't save any, just right. to give you a difference. Okay. They, they took the view, we only, we're not, this is not YouTube, you see. So we don't want to have all the same features of YouTube. It's 24 hours and that's it. But you can stream as long as you like. I saw someone doing a 24 hour, I wasn't there the whole 24 hours. They did 24 hours non-stop only crash twice wow. in the 24 hours. So you can okay. stream as long as you like. Okay. And what, what would be a good length of a periscope? You know, you saw you could, you could do as long as you want, but yes. you know, before you get bored and so, what, what's okay, a good... Well, everyone asks me that, and I, a very simple answer, okay? Literally, as long as you are keeping the audience captivated and entertained. Right. Okay? Okay. So if you've done all your answers and your tips in five seconds, yeah. that's the length of your show. Okay. If you can keep it going for 15 minutes, then that's your show. But ultimately, I think between seven to 10 minutes is a nice live broadcast. Because you've got to remember two things, where people are watching it, which is typically on their mobile. Mm. And secondly, they have a data plan perhaps. They're not all mm. on Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and they're using their data. Mm. So respect that. So I think seven to 10 minutes. Okay, great. Now, one of the things that I thought of when it first came out, potentially, imagine I was like, came to an accident or something, and you know, you needed to, you could video that, and a doctor could see it and implicate. Yes. But I'm sure there's potential good that you can do with Periscope. You know, uh, what, what are the implications there for charities or good or good causes? Exactly. One of the, to me, one of the main big things that could be utilized for is live streaming charitable acts, live streaming them, giving them the money, donating money, and so on. And with that in mind, we launched. Oh, only about two or three days ago, mm -hmm. this site called scopeforgood.org. Okay. Okay. And all it is is trying to bring a global community together. There's no money, we're all volunteers. If they hear of anyone doing anything charitable, anything for good cause, okay, they just film it on Periscope and they, they add the hashtag, hashtag scopeforgood. Right. That's it. Okay. okay. There's no, we don't want anyone's credit cards, debit cards. Yeah. It's just a way to raise global awareness of people doing really good stuff. So if you're doing good or charitable, we've seen some good, use the hashtag scope, the hashtag for, good. scope for good, Periscope it. it on Periscope, yeah. and then just get it out there, and then we'll track some of the better ones, some, we'll feature some ones on the site, and there'll be other things coming down the line. If they look at our website as well, they'll see what we're about. There's only a few pages on the site, yeah. but we'd also encourage people to join us, just need their email address so we can give them news, updates, and more information as we progress. Great. So if that hashtag scope for good now, you'll see some videos that people Absolutely. have done, done there. Great. great. So uh, just really finally, what's the, what will be the implication for a small business in terms of using it you know, from a strategy point of view? How should they go about using it? Is it like sort of give little tips? Is it pre-launch? What, what would you say to... to bit, a bit of everything. I think one, to fit in with their current aim of thinking of what else they're doing. But I think where it works best is behind the scenes. Show me the people making the stuff. Share with me the CEO, the MD, the passion, the vision, the behind the scenes stuff. Why are you making that widget? How did you come up with that idea? Mm. How do you make the products? Mm. Everyone thinks their business is boring because they're in it. Mm. For us as outsiders, it's quite interesting some of the times. Okay? Show me the woman who's making the stuff or the guy who's making it. So share behind the scenes, share the passion, share the vision, share the journey, share why you're doing it. But also, ultimately, I, as I said in an earlier show, sell without selling. Mm. All that, if people like what you're doing, a lot of them will go, oh, I quite like that. How do I now buy it? Yeah. And then you then lead them at the end of the show 
to your website, to your Twitter account, or wherever you want to head them to. Fantastic, great. Some great tips there, Mark. Thank you very much. My and pleasure. some earlier on, some great tips. So if people want to know more about you and your show, is there literally Google Mark Shaw? Is there a website? Is oh, there well, a I'm on Twitter, at yeah. Mark Shaw. I'm okay. on Periscope, at Mark Shaw. Right. I have a website, markshaw.biz, B-I-Z. Fantastic, great. And do you do about two or three Periscopes a day? I try and do about two or three Periscopes great. a day. Great, okay, yes. yeah, there you go. So there's Mark Shaw talking about uh, Periscope and all things social media. Thank you so much for your My time. Pleasure. Thanks for great, having me on the show. So um, this show's uh, broadcast broadcast uh, at edit as live so you will see it later tonight and you can repeat it so it'll be on Mark's website and stuff so that's Be Entrepreneur TV I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show we've had uh, Julian Hall earlier on talking about his entrepreneurship Mark talking about social media and Periscope and we had Warren Cass talking about I Love Entrepreneurship so uh, until the next time we've got many many great guests and if you want to appear on the show hashtag BTV drop us a tweet let us know why would you want to be on the show whether you know of a business that's starting soon and you want us to feature their show their business that would be great as well you've got an event coming up that would be great as well so we'd like to feature your event so until the next time from myself and Mark and Dave behind the scenes take care bye 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 bye